welcome back to my channel. This is the more advanced Excel video that has been long awaited. I would recommend you first watch my basic Excel for accountants video that I filmed way back in June or July. And I told you guys in that video I was gonna be filming a more advanced version and I'm just now doing it. So 2020 was crazy, work was crazy. I was not motivated at all to be even looking at Excel on my days off of work. But now that I've taken a week off of work, I am now motivated enough to get back into Excel. <laughs> That's funny how burnout works with your brain. So anyways, this time around, I do have my MacBook. So I did upgrade to a MacBook this year. Also, I have a privacy screen on here and you guys can't see what I'm doing, but I'm gonna be screen recording so you'll get to see everything that I'm doing. I just love this little screen protector. I'll have it linked down below if you want it. <laughs> so if you guys are familiar with Microsoft Excel, you know that it can do a million things. Can I do a million things? Absolutely not. So do not expect super high level advanced Excel knowledge. There are YouTubers out there. I'm sure you can find anything you want to find in Excel on YouTube. So definitely look for that. The purpose of this video is to show you guys a little more advanced than my foundations video for accounting for the accounting profession. Keep in mind that what you do every day in Excel as an accountant can be very different than the person next to you, what they use every day in Excel. Because we all do different tasks every day, we have a different knowledge of Excel. So you guys may know everything I'm showing you or it may all be new to you. I don't know. But instead of focusing on super high level Excel knowledge, I wanted to be very practical to the everyday accountant and to new accountants specifically. If you're super high up controller, CFO, or whatever within your company, most likely you'll be doing different things that I've never seen because I'm just an auditor. <laughs> I've been an auditor for three years and I definitely use Excel every single day at work. So I'm really familiar with it and I'm comfortable with it, but I only use the same functions pretty much all the time. I would definitely recommend you Google little shortcuts in Excel if you're if you feel like there's a quicker way to do something. There probably is because Microsoft Excel is so advanced. It is so smart and it can do literally anything. <laughs> in this video, I plan to show you guys a sum if function, a VLOOKUP function, how to remove duplicate values, how to use spell check in Excel, how to filter your columns and your data to pull specific values out, how to sort your data, and how to protect your workbook so no one else can come in there and mess up all your data. Let's say you pass it off to a colleague and you know they're probably gonna mess up something so you wanna protect them and make sure they can't delete stuff. So that's all I plan on covering in this video. If that is interesting to you, then let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna open up this Excel workbook and first we're gonna find a bunch of data that I just exported from the internet. I don't know what any of this stuff is, but it did come from a government website, so it might be real. And I think I stopped it at about 600 rows. Yeah, so it has 619 rows. It had over a million when I downloaded it and it took about 30 minutes to download. So I definitely got rid of most of that. So it didn't slow down my computer. The first thing I'll show you guys is over here on the right, you'll see how our scroll bar is super small. See how small this is? It has all this empty room, probably because I deleted all that data. So let's make our scroll bar the size that we want it to be to just help us out on actually scrolling through the data so we don't have to sit here and try and figure out where it starts and ends. So the best way to do that is to go underneath your data where you know for sure it stops. 6.3, wherever it's underneath your data, you're gonna hold down Control, Shift, and the Down key. And it's gonna highlight all the cells that it thinks that you want and you don't want those. So then you're gonna click the Delete key. Now we have a normal size scroll bar. And let's say for whatever this data is that we want to filter this entire data and we just wanna pull out maybe all the recipient states of Florida. So you're gonna go to the data tab and you're gonna click filter. So now over here on the recipient state, let's say we just want all of Florida. So you'll uncheck the select all and we're gonna go down and find Florida. And now it's gonna show you every single one of Florida and nothing else. So I'm gonna go back to selecting all. So we have all the data here. And let's say we want to remove all the duplicate values. Let's say that we think Dan Smith is on here multiple times and we wanna make sure he's only on here once. So you're gonna highlight the whole entire data because you want all the columns to be deleted, not just that specific person. Just go to the data tab and click remove duplicates. And I'm mostly just concerned with B. We want the first name because I think all of them will be unique per person. So now 462 duplicate values were found and removed. So now we only have 155. Looky there, now we can do our scroll bar trick again. Underneath here, control shift down click the delete key, and then there we have a normal size scroll bar. So over here in our VLOOKUP tab, I'm gonna show you guys a quick VLOOKUP. However, 
I don't use VLOOKUP that often. I've probably used it three or four times in my entire three year career. It's most helpful if you have like thousands of data lines, if you're trying to pull one specific amount. If you can't just hit Control F and search for a keyword, if it's hidden in the data, then VLOOKUP will be helpful. So it's gonna be hard to show you guys an example, especially with this small amount of data that I have here. You guys can at least get the concept of what a VLOOKUP is. Let's say that our manager came over and they were like, hey, we need to analyze item numbers 10425, maybe look up 10422 and 10437. Oh, first let's go through this data. So here's some order ID numbers and this is the product name of the order ID number. And this is how much each item costs or the price that we're selling it for. And then the quantity, how many maybe we have on hand, and then the inventory value. So I just did a formula for these two. I took the price and how many we have. Even though you wouldn't use price for inventory, this really should be unit cost, how much it costs us to purchase. That's my bad. Okay, <laughs> accounting flaw. So now I have the inventory value here. Our employer wants us to look deeply into these. Maybe there's an issue with it or something fuzzy or whatever. So equals V lookup and then parentheses. And we're wanting to look up this 10425. So I would just type in 10425, or you can just click, since I already have it typed out, we can do that. And we're wanting to look at both of these columns because we want to pull it out of this order ID number, but we also want it to spit out the product name because that's what means something to us. The order ID number doesn't mean much. And we're wanting it to spit out the product name. So this is in column two, so you would type in a two. And the range lookup, this is true or false. In most cases, you'll use false, meaning you're looking for an exact match. If you're wanting an approximate match, then you would do approximate match. But for this case, because it's a specific order number that we're looking for, we're gonna do false. So now we know that 10425 is sticky notes. And what I would probably do to do the rest of these two is just copy these two down. And it actually went ahead and updated this because we did the K13. Because I didn't actually type in the 10425, then it knows that that's what these two are. What I would really do in the real world if I was looking for this specific amount is just hit Control F or Command F if you have a Mac and then look for the 10425 and it would come out to be the sticky notes. It would bring you to this exact row and you know that's the sticky notes and I would just type in sticky notes and you wouldn't really need a VLOOKUP for this. So this is a poor example of a VLOOKUP, but if you have a ton of data, it's super helpful. So next over here on our sum if tab, I'm gonna show you guys a sum if. So this is the same exact data as the VLOOKUP tab with our random products and what the cost was, inventory value. I'm gonna do unit cost again, just to be accurate. <laughs> if it was unit price, then it would be how much revenue we made and not how much we paid for the item in our inventory. I did add a column here for the fiscal year bought. Let's say we're testing the cutoff and we wanna make sure that the items that we bought in 2019 are in 2019, which ones we bought in 2020 or in 2020. So let's say we wanna know all of the total cost of inventory for 2019 and then 2020. So 2019, you would do equals sum if parentheses, we're looking for this column. We want all the ones in this column to come out if they are the criteria of 2019. Again, you could type in quotation marks, 2019 quotation marks, comma. That also works. But just to be easy, we're just going to click 2019. And we want to know the inventory value of all of that. So it's telling us it's 10,527. All right, so 2020, we would do the same thing. Sum if the range would be this column. Well, this time we're looking for 2020, and we're wanting the inventory value of all the ones in 2020. And a good way to test this, it would be to sum it up and we see we have 16411. You could also highlight all this and look way down here in your far right. You have 16411, you could do auto sum to make sure it's 16411. Just in case maybe you have a 2018 or 2017 that popped up in here and you want them all to be included. Again, this is not a good example because what I would really do in this instance would be to highlight this whole data and do a pivot table. So insert pivot table on a new worksheet. So I'm looking for the fiscal year bought and the inventory value. So here we have 29, actually that looks kind of silly. Let's bring this over here. All right, 2019, 10,527, and then 2020. So that would be the quickest way to do it. And you can play around with the pivot table. It's really easy. I use it a lot at work. You can even do the quantity amount. You can see how many of each item that you've sold. So pivot tables are super helpful. You'll use that a lot as an accountant. Let's say I misspelled some words and we want to use spell check, which a lot of people don't realize spell check is in Excel. 
And it's not going to catch everything because you could misspell one of these words and it could still be another word and our English language is so complex that we have a lot of words. But it wants to change this to round with only one N. So yeah, we're going to change that. And then fuzzy, it has two Z's. So yeah, we'll change that. And we're good to go. Lastly, I'll show you guys how you can protect your whole workbook, how you can set it as read only, which we already have the tab open. So up in review, you have protect sheet, which will just protect this one sheet to not make any changes on it. And then protect workbook, which will be the entire workbook, all the tabs that you have. And you can set it to always open as read only. I'll show that first. So we'll have that checked and then we'll save it and then close it. My clients do this a lot since I'm the auditor. They'll send me a lot of data that they don't want me to accidentally change and then write them up for if something's wrong. So here when I reopen it, it's gonna tell me that it's read only and it, it'll still let you open it as edit mode, which means no, I don't wanna open it as read only or you can open it as read only. It just warns you that, hey, the data is sort of protected. And in order to change this on here, we're gonna have to go back to the review and then click this to uncheck it and then save it as that. To protect the workbook, you can have it password protected. Let's say our password is 2020. So we'll verify our password. And it tells you here what's actually protected about it. So now it's protected, it's great, and you're gonna save it. So it's not gonna let us add another tab on here. It's not gonna let us delete this tab. See how delete is grayed out. You can format some things. I think I can still add like a column here. Maybe I'll put all this in bold. So it lets you make some changes, but as far as the integrity of the entire workbook, you can't just delete things. You may not be able to hide. Okay, yeah, you can still hide a column, but you can't hide a whole tab. See how hide is grayed out? And in order to unprotect it, you're going to type in the password again. And there we go, it's unprotected. You can also set up your entire workbook to be password protected in order to open it. So maybe it's super confidential information. Maybe it's a bunch of people's social security numbers, bank numbers, I don't know. And you're sending it to somebody and this happens a lot for us. Obviously the auditor, we're looking at a lot of bank information and things that the client doesn't want to leak. So they'll send it to us with a password and then they'll email us the password separately or tell us over the phone what the password is. So you would go to file passwords and we can set it as whatever you're going to want it to be you know a little complex you don't want people to guess it so maybe it's bank capital b at symbol nk 2020 and it can be a different password if you want the document to be able to be modified but we'll do the same one capital b at symbol nk 2020 and it definitely doesn't want you to forget your password and lose all of your data luckily this is just pretend i don't really care about this random data that i took from the internet <laughs> So we're gonna test it out by closing the document. I'm going to open it back up and here's my password. So capital B at symbol NK 2020. And if we didn't know the password, we just wanted it to be read only, that's fine too. Or if I'm wanting to make changes, I'm typing in the password so I can make changes to the document. And in order to turn that off, you have to go back down here. So I just deleted out the password and it shouldn't have one on here anymore. Yeah, so that I completely deleted it. We're gonna save it, open it back up. And it just opened up, I didn't need the password since I deleted it. So yeah, you guys, that is a little more advanced in Excel. Again, it is not super advanced. A lot of you may know those little techniques, but a lot of you may not. And I wanted to show a little more advanced things that I do at work every day. So hopefully it helped. I don't think I'll be doing any more advanced Excel because it kind of loses its purpose for the everyday accountant or auditor. If you are somebody that's super high level in Excel, there are a lot of YouTubers out there. There's a lot of videos out there that you can find specific techniques or specific functions that you can use. I just just don't use a lot of high level functions every day at work. I'd use the basic stuff that I just showed you in Excel. So yeah, you guys, hopefully that was helpful and thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time for whatever video comes up next. <laughs> Bye guys.